Well, thanks for tuning back in. I'm going to try something that I don't think that I've done yet. Uh, I'm gonna, it's not that complicated. It's on a watch that I just picked up. This uh, Timex uh, T2N700 Quartz, uh, Intelligent Quartz is what it's um, labeled as. You can kind of see it there uh, under the close-up. I'm going to try to, to take this, pop this back off and, uh, and do everything under the under this other camera so that we can kind of see. I um, I bought this watch. I, I googled a while back um, pilot type watches or whatever and uh, the person that, that created the list their their list was based on uh, value and it started off watches under 200, watches under 500, watches under a thousand and it just went from from there and the watches under the $200 mark this was one of them and, and so I just did a quick search of uh, on eBay and this one battery was dead the the strap it, it comes with a strap uh, let's see if I can place that underneath there lots of it's, it's been worn a time or two not in bad shape just kind of water stains I've got some some cleaner that I might be able to clean that out with uh, if I even care to but the watch itself there's no scratches on the on the crystal um, I'm sure it's not a sapphire crystal, just a regular whatever uh, quartz, glass type uh, mineral crystal. Um, but I paid forty dollars for it, and the the person that was selling it, they just said the battery was dead, and needed to be replaced, and so I paid forty bucks for it, and I went and picked up a, a battery, and I'm going to try to take this thing apart and see what happens. Uh, if it's as easy or as difficult as as some people make make it out to be. Um, it's a rarely uh, unique looking watch. It's 42-ish, maybe 44 millimeters uh, in width, excluding the crown. Um, but I'm going to give this a, a shot. Just, you know, it's Timex, and so nothing, no bells or, or whistles there. And um, we'll see if I can do this without, without shedding too much blood in the process. So it's a snap back case and uh, I can see right in here there's gunk but there's a little bit of a groove now I've got a, a case back opener and um, but the blade on it is uh, you know it's not going to cut it cut you for sure but it's not going to get in that little spot and so I'm going to try using uh, this this uh, bench made knife that I have uh, needs to it's pretty sharp but it needs to be sharpened and we will see if I can get this to to pop open I can already tell it's wanting to catch the lip um, hopefully we won't see blood dude is on there I think it moved a little bit maybe not give it another shot There we go. Nice, satisfying pop and no blood. See, I marred up my case back just a little bit, but for $40, that's the way it is. China Timex case. You can see the, the battery underneath there. So the question is, does that just come off like on G-Shocks there's usually a little place where you can just push down and it pops open but I am not seeing anything I'm guessing maybe maybe that's a screw no that's I've got a loop here. Let me grab my loop. I don't know where I put it. Let me see if I can take a look and see exactly what we got going here. No, nope, that is. That could be. Move over. Get a little better light on the subject. It sure is. It's a little. 
maybe Phillips. Yeah, that go that ring goes all the way around, so maybe a really small Phillips. Or if I've got a standard screwdriver that small, this one may work. Man, that's little. This is one of those deals where I tell myself don't do this. I don't have a proper workbench to do these kind of things and um, these screws are notorious on a lot of watches for for launching. So I'm going to hold that down with my finger. Something's turning hopefully. That screw turned. I know you can't see that. It's loose, but it's got like, it just doesn't want to let go. Alright, let's see if I can... builds can he do it oh that was it right there yeah that's a launcher let me just tell you and it's out all right so in theory let's see if we can I'm gonna turn this case back over set it out of the way put that screw in the back of the case back so that's our our movement nothing fancy to look at it says or it reads Timex Philippines reset push 353 three. that's all the markings that we have on the movement and here is the battery housing and so I'm assuming that will slide back in there that way since it fell out without me being able to see let me see if I can get that battery out So, CR2016, I'm putting an Energizer, this is Panasonic. Um, I know in, in today's world of safety, um, you've, you've probably already heard, don't just leave these things laying around. Uh, you know, no little kids come, come here and, and get into my stuff. But, uh, if for some reason that were to ever happen, um, there, there's always, you always see on the news nowadays, where some child somewhere um, swallowed a battery. And we had one not too long ago. I actually, it wasn't in my church. It was in town. And uh, I met um, the mom of a child who had passed away. Their, their ch little, little infant had somehow gotten a hold of a button cell battery, obviously smaller than these and um had had swallowed it and uh man it was just devastating devastating effects and so i 
um, I usually will put some some tape on it and stick it back into the into the the case the empty spot and then I'll know if it's got tape on it it's no good and then when they're done I can throw the whole thing away and if for some reason I buy an individual pack I usually wrap it in tape and still throw it away into the into the trash can but I don't ever just toss the battery um, just because of uh, of that that situation uh, and so I'm gonna try and I can get this battery back in there no problem the thing that always makes me nervous is that screw I'm telling you I've I've launched them and I've been pretty fortunate most of the time I find them but uh, one of these times it's not gonna be the case I actually had to buy one for another G-Shock I bought it off of eBay uh, for dirt cheap because the person that sold it was doing the same thing I'm doing right now changing the battery battery launched across the room and uh, and they didn't want to spend twelve dollars for a battery and so I bought it and I mean for a screw and I bought it and sp spent twelve dollars for a screw and put the thing back together and uh, it took off working just fine let's see if that thing started ticking uh, there it goes I don't think I think that's focusing on something otherwise. Anyway, it was moving, so that's a good sign. So now the chore will be getting that screw back in the right spot there. And so I will grab the screw if I can. Sometimes I'll use tweezers, but man, I've, I've launched them trying to use tweezers too. So I usually, I usually just pick the screw up and uh, kind of drop it down into the spot and then gently with the screwdriver wiggle it into place. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. like this time so far so good I was talking to a watchmaker one time this guy was working on pocket watches and he, had, he was actually a certified Rolex watchmaker and uh, he was telling me about one of the things that he always took pride in was never leaving a mark on a movement. Something like this doesn't matter, but just a second ago whenever my screwdriver clunked down hard, I'm sure I left a little bit of a mark and he said that was one of the things that when he was uh, studying that they always... Uh, tried to ensure that you never did was uh, run your your screwdriver across uh, the movement or whatever tool you happen to be using at the time and and leave marks and so I appreciated that uh, from him anyway all right so this is usually the hard part on these case backs is popping it back in because you know they only have a water resistance of like a hundred meters this thing is filthy the the gasket's still in there. Um, I've got some silicone somewhere, but I'm not going to mess with it since this is not going to be a dive watch. Um, and it was not real dry. But getting this thing pressed back in without, see it's got a little bit of a dome crystal. And so I don't know that I'll have the, the strength just to pop it on, maybe. But it was pretty tight. No. Nope. It is not popping back on. So, what I'm going to do is, if I had, let's see, what do we got here? Ideally, about the size of a medicine, the lid of a medicine bottle. 
Um, usually I got more things laying around in my office. Let's see. I don't think that's going to work. I don't cushion it enough, but I think it's too much cushion to... Yeah, that ain't doing any good. Well, I'm going to pause. I'm not. I'm just going to leave them running. Let me go look and see if I've got a little thing because I need to be able to set the top on something firm and then really put my weight on that case back to snap that thing to So I'm going to try that. Set this in the battery. So it's sitting on that. See, that's the lid off of some ibuprofen. I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to put this. Give it a little cushion between it. And so we've got that lined up and I'm just going to put the, as much of my weight on that case back as I can. And that did nothing. <laughs> Ooh, that's a tough one. Maybe that's why the guy sold it to me cheap. That dude is tough now. All right, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try to work it in and then put So almost satisfying. Thought I had it. All right, here we go. All right, so I'm going to shift a few things around here. May not be able to do it directly under that camera, but I bet you're not being able to see it anyway. I'm going to move it right here to the edge. Maybe that camera's got it. It does not want to go on there. Intelligent courts, an intelligent case, or somebody more intelligent than me trying to put this thing on. Oh, one light just died. Bigger hammer, that's what you need. Oh, that was close. I could almost feel that thing go in that time. I'm going to pause these things and see if I can find some better tools. Clear stuff out of the way. Watch this for a few more videos. Alright. 
in theory our path is clear and The cap is crumbling. I'm wondering, there's enough give in the middle of that back. $40 watch. That can be toast. Just gonna try it that way. thing does not want to go on holy smokes all right so here's what I've accomplished I think you can see this in the video I've accomplished getting the battery in and not getting the back on I I tried stepping on it lightly I just, man, it just feels like it should just go. <laughs> it almost goes. All right, so failure, sort of. I've got a friend who's got a, he's replaced, actually, what did he do for me one time? Now I don't even remember. Anyway, he's got a watch shop in town. So tomorrow, if I don't get this, gosh, in my mind, I'm thinking vice grips. With some leather <laughs> between it's a bad idea I know it so I probably won't do that I probably not gonna show this part of the video um, but my guess is what I will do is I will take it to him and uh, and I'm sure he's got a little machine that just goes clunk and pops it right back on because I can't do it and what I'm about to resort to I am almost positive will ruin this thing and so I would rather it not be ruined even though it is relatively inexpensive it's still forty dollars golly man it just so wants to go I know you want to go all right well I'm calling it good let me see if I can set it anyway it is 9 17 Beeps. That is interesting. You can set the date either way. In position one. All right. Like, one thing I've also noticed after playing with it for a second, even with the back off, is that the hands don't reset to zero. Uh, this is horrible without that other light. Um, the stopwatch hand, the the big hand right here, does not reset to the 12 o'clock position. So I'm sure there's a procedure like there is with most uh, quartz watches that are like this. Pull out the crown to position two, hold down both buttons, whatever it is. I'll look that up, um, but I, I've got to get that back put on there correctly. And so that one is going to sit right here until tomorrow. And I think I will be going to town and I can get that uh, taken care of. All right, I'll be back. I may do a, just a real brief review on the thing um, after that. So uh, thanks for, for watching this little bit. Well, I finally got the, the Timex uh, flyback uh, watch. I got the back back on it, put back on it. Like I said, in the in the video just a few moments ago obviously but a, a day or two ago for me in reality i had to take it to a um a friend of mine who he's a jeweler and he has all of the the machinery 
a press or a, I can't remember exactly what he used. I didn't get to video him doing it, but he he put the the watch in and the device and set it all up correctly and then uh, applied the the appropriate pressure to get it to snap back. And uh, when I handed it to him, he laughed and he said he sees uh, these these Timex uh, watches in all the time. He said usually the people end up breaking the crystal or they do damage. Uh, to the the movement itself as they're trying to snap that thing uh, back back in place and so uh, he got it in there correctly uh, it's a cool little watch actually um, I'm not wearing it today I'm wearing a, a W well the khaki pilot pioneer version of the W10 but it keeps here's the piece of wood that I tried to use <laughs> to, to get that thing back on I really did I am fortunate I did not destroy this thing in the process so uh, it comes on this vintage leather strap, vintage looking leather strap. I bought, like I said, I bought this thing used for $40. Um, whoever it was had a, a very small wrist. You can see where the this strap was all the way on to the third, third hole or second hole, second hole. Um, yeah, let's see if I can show you that. I was doing that off camera. So that's where this the buckle would have been buckled right there on that right before that second to the last hole and so that's a pretty small wrist Let's see if I can show that that may be third hole let's see yeah would have been on the third hole um, so that's I don't have a huge wrist. I've got a seven and a quarter, give or take, um, but that's definitely smaller. But it's still, it's a great looking um, strap. I love that that classic look of that leather. I'm, I'm gonna see, I think I've got some, some leather cleaner, saddle soap or something. I may see if I can clean that mark off. Um, it got pretty wet. It may not matter, it just, it looks good, it looks fine. But you can see the case back is on correctly. has all of the pertinent information Timex 1854 series intelligence quartz T2N700 is the if you're going to look this up on Timex's website to find out all the pertinent information about it uh, that's that's what you would look for but they call it the flyback version just because of the way the the hands um, respond so when you start and I had to reset the the chronograph hand it was way over here at eight and there's a procedure where you pull the crown out to the second position and then you use a, the A and B button to move it into the correct one. It's pretty simple. Uh, not like I've got, I've used a couple or had a couple of um, citizens that when the hands, n notoriously on a citizen, if it gets banged or something like that, the hands get out of whack and then you have to go through pulling out the crown to position number one pushing in A and B button until it beeps and and I, I and then there's some of them are more complicated than that but this was pretty simple um, so anyway you pull the crown on this one to number two and then you put it right into into the position but so the chronograph when you start it you can see that you've got it keeping the seconds and then you've got a couple of other registers on uh, on this this bottom register here it keeps track of elapsed minutes <clears throat> and then this chronograph this uh, register here keeps track of hours if you're looking to uh, to time something for that amount of time but then you can stop it and then when you hit the bottom button to clear it it flies back to to the 12 o'clock position that's really about it. I'm going to turn the lights off in here and um, and see if we can see the Indiglo feature on this. Let me. Okay, so it looks completely dark in this video screen. I don't think it's picking it up at all. I may try and take my. You can barely see it. Um, I used to have a an Indiglo uh, watch with Indiglo on it from Timex, 
that man it was it was extremely bright i'm going to just turn on the main lights and uh i think what i'm going to do actually is i'm going to take one of these cameras into a room that's completely dark and see if i can get that to work let me do a loom check on this as well if i can find my uv light let's see what kind of loom we got here got it on the the hour and the minute hand i guess that's it hour minute hand are the only two places on this with loom well, let me let me take this camera I don't know that it's going to focus, but you could see that. You can kind of get the gist of that. Timex uh, flyback T2N 700 intelligent quartz watch. If you can find them for cheap, um, I recommend having it around. It's just a good, if you like analog uh, watches, it's a nice one to have uh, to, to put on for work or whatever. Uh, definitely not the dressiest watch but uh but just a good little watch well thank you for watching thanks for putting up with my struggles of trying to get that case back on um i'm gonna probably leave some of that in there because it's kind of humorous i suppose and uh tried to save some i did save money my watch maker friend did not charge me for his his time so the cost of the watch was 40 dollars. the battery was 299 and then uh and and so i have 40 43 bucks roughly in this watch that retails for over a hundred uh, you can find them on any given day on ebay for 60 80 bucks probably um, so there you go thank you for watching once again and we'll see you next time